and welcome to another Lawn Farm video. Today we are so excited to be introducing our secret garden window dies, so let's go ahead and check them out. This die set comes with two different styles of windows that you can use on their own or you can layer them together and we'll be showing you different ways to do that in this video. And it also comes with little individual flower pieces that you can either layer or tuck behind all of those gorgeous flowers in that arch. So let's go ahead and check out how to separate these because it almost looks like it's one big die, but you actually wanna separate them because that's gonna give you the opportunity to be able to either use the plain arched window or or to use the floral arched window. So I love that there's lots of different options for this. Um, and then we're gonna use wire snips just to separate all of those extra little flowers that are on the inside that you can layer and tuck into the frame. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the more plain of the secret garden window here, just more the window part, right? And so we're just gonna take a standard size card base that's five and a half by four and a quarter, and we're gonna die cut that, and you'll see that it creates this beautiful window that has this gorgeous dotted detail all of the way around that is so delicate and just so pretty. And this is just a perfect frame for a scene or a sentiment on a card. Now, the trick for lining these two windows up, if you wanna layer them, is you put this one right over top, the plain one, and then you just put the floral one in between. You can kinda eyeball it and make sure it's centered. Then hold it in place with some low tack tape. We'll remove the plain arch there and then we can run it through the die cut machine and now you're going to have this beautiful floral window. And you could of course use this secret garden window on its own or you can layer the two pieces together. And this is what it looks like when those are layered together and it is just so very pretty. And now we're gonna take these and just layer them onto some peacock cardstock so you can really see the design. So you could just use the floral arch or you can layer the plain arch over top or of course you could use the plain arch on its own. And then these little flowers you can tuck in to create even more detail on your secret garden. And that's really fun to do with different colors of cardstock or pattern paper. And then you can also layer these cute little flowers. The little centers are my favorite and those can actually layer either anywhere you want or right on top of the flowers that are already in the window. So for the first card that we're going to make, we're going to die cut a stitched rectangle that's the largest stitched rectangle. It'll be a standard size card at five and a half by four and a quarter. And in this case, we are just going to be using the plain arch here, this plain window. Um, and we're going to frame a scene with that. And right now I am recreating a card by Elena. So thank you so much, Elena. So we've die cut some of this beautiful speckled egg paper. I just think it's so gorgeous. And then I'm actually just gonna take a light brown marker that kind of matches my paper and I'm gonna align in between those dots and the window. And there's something about this that is so pretty. I loved how Elena did this on her card. It really just highlights the frame and it almost gives it this like kind of um, antique -y feel and it was really, really quick and easy to do. Now here is the new What's Sewing On paper. And one of my favorite papers in this collection is this beautiful blue floral. It is so pretty and through this window, it looks beautiful. And it kind of feels like a sky as well. And it gives you that secret garden feel even though we're only using the plain window piece. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some foam squares to the back of this. And that's my favorite way to use this die is to add foam squares because when you have that height, it's what gives you that window feel. So we'll peel off all of the liner paper and then layer it on top of that pretty blue floral. And you'll see that just by adding that little bit of height, it just feels so special. I think this is just so pretty. I'm gonna make like a million cards like this. <laughs> So right now we're going to be taking out the Elephant Parade stamp set, which is such a cute stamp set. But I also love that this layout right here could be used with a ton of different stamp sets too. And we're going to take out a bunch of the images of this set. And then I'm also going to take out this Extraordinary Easter set because it has these cute little grasses and then all the clouds for some clouds. And you can kind of shop your stash of stamp sets and find clouds and little grasses and designs to make. And then we're going to take some heart-shaped balloons from the Elephant Parade add-on. And because I want to have that kind of windowy feel again, I'm going to be adding a lot of foam squares to the backs of these images. 
And once I added foam squares behind everything, I could start to lay everything into my scene. Now, this cute little mama elephant and baby elephant is too sweet, and I thought it was a perfect image for a Mother's Day card. So that's what we're gonna be creating today. That stamp set also has these adorable little mice, and I'm gonna add those mice in, and then layer those little grass pieces behind the mice. And I feel like that helps kind of create a ground for this whole scene, which is really, really nice. Then I'm gonna start adding in some of the clouds. And what I really love about this is we're gonna tuck one of the clouds kind of behind the window. And by doing that, it makes it feel like the scene kind of extends beyond and we're looking through this window in at this sweet little mama and baby. Then we'll add a tiny little cloud there. And then we can add these beautiful little heart-shaped balloons. I just think they're so sweet, kind of flying up into the sky. And then I'm gonna stamp the sentiment. So I went to this mom and me stamp set because there's a happy Mother's Day in there. Uh, but it's just another one of those shop your stash moments, right, to find the perfect sentiment. I'm gonna stamp the happy Mother's Day out, but this could be a baby card too, or just an I love you card or anything you could think of. And I'm gonna die cut that with this little sentiment banner. And then we're gonna add this banner onto the card and it's going to be kind of another place that we can add some of our stamped elements. Uh, to give the banner just a pretty look and help tie it into that beautiful blue in the background, I'm just taking a blue marker and lining the kind of inner edge of that whole banner. And it's gonna make the whole thing pop and you'll see how it kind of brings the blue from the pattern paper, which I think is so pretty. Now the Elephant Parade stamp set has these really cute little like baby bottle and little peanuts. Of course, if you wanted it to be like not so much of a new Mother's Day card, like for a new mom, you could do the same exact card and just remove the baby bottle and that would work really, really well too. And then here is a standard size card base that's five and a half by four and a quarter. And I'm gonna layer this onto the card. And my last little step is that I just wanted to add one little heart above the mouse. I don't know why, but I just thought that was so super cute and sweet. And now this card is all done and I just love this little design and I love that it could work for a lot of different occasions. So now that we have created with our plain window, we're gonna go ahead and start working with the secret garden part of this whole thing. And we're gonna be doing a layer here. And this is a card by Rebecca that is just so much fun. So we have a standard size piece of cardstock here that's five and a half by four and a quarter. And we're gonna cut the plain window out of this. And then we're going to layer another piece of cardstock that's the same size behind that window. And this window is gonna be the guide of where we're gonna put the floral window part. And the reason I like to do it this way is now you're gonna have them perfectly lined up and it makes it super easy to do because you can really easily kind of eyeball centering that one arch in the other one. So we're just gonna hold that in place with some low tack tape and then we'll run that through the die cut machine. And now we have both of these. And we are actually going to keep these out of white cardstock because we want the pop of color to be inside of the window for this card. And for that, we're going to take out some really rainbow paper. And how fun is that? I just love this look. Then before we start to assemble things, we're gonna do some stamping. And the Extraordinary Easter add-on stamps, it has some great sentiments. And this one is so sweet. It's somebody wishes you an extra amazing Easter. And we're gonna stamp that in some guava ink, which is this really pretty bright pink that's gonna go really nicely with that really rainbow paper. And then now that our stamping is done, we can do some of our layering. So this is a standard size card base. Once again, everything is five and a half by four and a quarter. We're going to layer that really rainbow paper on top. And then we're gonna take out some of that green shimmer paper, which is really pretty, and kind of layer that. And we're gonna use the windows as a guide here. So you'll see that Rebecca's kind of layering those over top, and then she's just shifting her paper up and down until she likes exactly where it is. Then you can just take a pencil and mark that and just trim that off. That way you don't have to do any kind of special measuring. We're just kind of using that window as a guide. Then we can add that green shimmer cardstock at the bottom and we can start to layer our different windows. So we're gonna add foam squares behind both of these windows and that's gonna give us this kind of double pop window feel that gives that secret garden feel even more to the card. So we'll layer some foam squares behind the floral window and then we're gonna layer some foam squares behind the plain window. And I love the look of almost like three layers on the card. 
Then the last thing we need is the Extraordinary Easter stamp set. And there are some really cute images in this. And that little bunny peeking out from behind the egg is my very favorite one. So we went ahead and stamped and colored and die cut that guy just to match the paper in the background. So it was a really fun way to pick colors was to match all of the beautiful colors in the really rainbow. So we're gonna add this little guy there in the background. So we're adding him with some tape runner. That way he's kind of all the way in the background with the egg tucked in amongst the flowers. And then that little butterfly is gonna go in that upper corner just to add some color onto the white cardstock. And this is a really simple design, but it's so super cute. And you could imagine you could use this for a lot of occasions too. Now, one of the things that I thought of when I first started playing with this die is that it needed to be a shaker card. So we're gonna take some What's Sewing On paper here, and we're gonna die cut this with the largest stitch rectangle, so it'll be five and a half by four and a quarter. And right now I am recreating a card by Grace that was just so beautiful, so thank you so much, Grace. And so we're gonna take out both of these arches, and of course, just like we've done in all the other cards, we're gonna start with the plain window first. So I'm gonna run that through the die cut machine. And now that I have my plain window, I'm gonna take my piece of white card and layer it behind and then I can center the floral window right in the center and then hold that in place with some low tack tape and run that through the die cut machine. And now I have my two layers for my secret garden window. But before I keep working with these layers, I wanted to create a background. And this color combo by Grace, I never would have thought of it. And it is so pretty. And now I want to use it all the time. So it's spun sugar, shaded lilac, and peeled paint. And so we're going to bring this down on to the cardstock. And the spun sugar is really light. So I kept adding more and more and more to build up the color a little bit. And then as I kept adding my different colors, I brought my window over so that I could look through and kind of see how it's looking. To help blend between the pink and the purple, I'm going back and forth to the pink and then the purple to create that really pretty blend there. And then for the peeled paint, I didn't have the colors overlap too much. This is kind of going to be kind of like the grass in our scene, but I did go over it just a little bit with the purple. Now next I'm going to spray just some plain water on here and pick up the water with the paper towel. And I love how the water is reacting with the ink and I keep adding more and kind of bigger splatters because I think it feels really, really magical. Almost like that bouquet kind of look in a photograph. I just think it looks so pretty. And I want it to go along with that kind of splattery feel. So I'm gonna bring out some white paint here. You could use white acrylic paint. I'm using some Copic white and you can see it's really, really dry. Uh, but I just add water to it and keep using it and it works. So I added a little bit of water. And then as I take out the paint, I actually sprayed a little extra water on the side just to thin it out just a little bit. And I'm gonna pick that up with my paintbrush and then tap the paintbrush to create splatters all over the card. And you can see, once again, this is just adding to that beautiful, magical feel on this card. So now I'm gonna take this background and set it aside to dry, but I'm gonna be inspired by these colors to add color to this beautiful arch. So we've done one that was just plain window. We've added the floral but kept it white, and now we're gonna add color with some markers. And then later on, Shari is gonna be using some colored cardstock and layering in flowers, and it is so pretty. And so that's what I'm doing here is I'm just adding some color and blending it out onto the leaves. And one thing that I really liked about what Grace did on her card is she kind of left the little ends of the leaves kind of white and I thought that was really really pretty um, so I just kind of went through her coloring and tried to do similar things to her uh, there are these little layering pieces here that you can layer over those kind of tulip looking flowers and then more of the daisy flowers and so I'm just adding color to all of those and then I'm going to add a really light pink to those I call them like the dandelion flowers I'm not sure I'm sure they have a name but in my head they're the dandelion flowers I'm going to add a little light pink to those and then I can take some liquid glue there with the glue tube and layer on these pieces so I layered on the kind of pink flowers there and then for these little flowers there's a plain flower and then there's the one with the circle and then there's a little circle you can add in that so that's what I'm doing here now as I'm layering the one with the plain one on the back that way I can layer in what looks almost like a little button there on the center of the flower and you'll notice that one of my flowers is missing a center I couldn't find it so later on I end up die cutting one and adding that then I'm gonna layer these little flowers on top. And what I like about these is they're gonna kind of extend outside of the window. And I think that just looks really, really pretty, especially when we layer that other pattern paper over top. And now you can see that in action. And isn't that just so pretty? Oh, I love how this looks. 
Now it's time to start turning this into a shaker. So the next thing I need is some acetate and I've cut that to be the same size as that card there. And I'm just gonna add some tape here with some double-sided tape. I like that it's nice and strong to hold that acetate in place. So I'm just gonna add those all around the card. I can peel up the liner paper and then layer the acetate on the back. And that's gonna create our shaker windows. This is a really easy shaker to make with this die. And then next, I'm gonna take out the scalloped rectangles and I'm gonna be using the largest one there and we're gonna be layering that onto the back. But as I started to layer everything, I realized that this didn't exactly match up with my window the way I wanted it to. So I decided I just needed to just shift it a little bit and I did that by just trimming off a little bit on the bottom and then I just got another standard size card piece and I'm just gonna glue that right onto the piece and now everything's gonna line up perfectly and no one's ever gonna see that part because it's all going to be hidden. So then I'm gonna layer this piece onto that scalloped rectangle and then I'm gonna flip that window over and we're gonna start using some foam to create kind of like the well for our shaker pieces. And so here I have some foam tape and this foam tape is actually pretty thin so I am going to add a triple height of this foam and that kind of seems like it's kind of a lot but I actually really like it because I feel like then it gives more space for the shaker bits to move around. So I am going to triple these up instead of just double it up and then I can trim the pieces down so that they go all around the window but you won't be able to see them through the window. Next, I'm gonna use an anti-static powder tool and I'm just running it along the inside of the foam so that if there is any excess stickiness or tackiness in there, this powder is just gonna take that away and that way all of the little shaker pieces will be able to move freely, especially because I'm using a lot of glitter as the shaker pieces, I wanna make sure it doesn't just get stuck to that adhesive. Then onto the base, I'm gonna add my different shaker bits. So I'm using some Prisma glitter here. I'm also going to use some chunky glitter. And then I'm gonna add these cute little stars as well um, into the card. And I think those look so pretty. And then I'm just gonna peel up this liner paper and then we can layer our window on top and that is gonna effectively create our shaker. And isn't that just so pretty already? Oh, I just love it. And then of course we get to the best part, which is shaking it and I just think it looks so gorgeous. I live in a really dry place so there's a lot of static so sometimes some of the glitter gets stuck to the window but I actually kind of like that look. It feels really magical and really pretty. Now I wanted to add some stamped images into this window and on Grace's card she used some cute elephants but I thought it would be fun to go back to one of my favorite older sets which is Butterfly Kisses and use those because I hadn't used this set in a long time. So I'm gonna add that cute little bunny there into the flowers and then we'll add some butterflies. So I'm just gonna have some butterflies kind of flying around him. You'll see I had to move him down a little bit. He was a little bit up too high which I think actually thinks looks cuter with all of those kind of little leaves covering a little bit of him up. And then I'm gonna add a add those little butterflies on to the window for a super cute scene. And you can see just how pretty that is with that awesome shaker there. Oh, it's so gorgeous. Now, next up, I needed to work on a sentiment and there is a brand new stamp set that's called Henry Jr.'s ABCs. And it's an alphabet stamp set and it is so much fun to use and really easy to use too. So all of the letters are on the same size rectangular base and they're designed so that you can line them right up and they're gonna have like perfect distance from each other and it's gonna look amazing. And it's really, really fun to do too. So I am spelling out miss you and all I need to do is just kind of butt each one of those letters up against each other and then and press it flat down onto my block. I'm gonna do some heat embossing. So I'm prepping my cardstock with an anti-static powder tool. And then I'm gonna take out my clear embossing ink and I'm gonna pick up some of that ink with my cute little letters there. And I'm gonna stamp that on to my white piece of cardstock. Then I'll sprinkle on some white heat embossing powder and then I can heat it up with the heat tool to have a nice bright white shiny sentiment. And I wanted the sentiment to match the rest of the card. So I took out shaded lilac, which is one of the same colors that we use for the background. And I'm gonna ink that over the letters. And because we heat emboss them, they're gonna resist the ink. And I think that's always so much fun to kind of see the letters kind of appear. And so I'm just gonna keep inking this until I build up the color to be a nice kind of bold color. And then I'm just gonna take a dry cloth here and I'm gonna buff the letters off. And you'll see now they really pop against that really pretty purple. And now I brought it up to the card to kind of see how 
it matched. I think it looks really good. So I'm going to use a banner die here to die cut the sentiment. And so I'm going to add, line up the left side of the banner with the left side of the word, run that through the die cut machine. And then on the right side, I'm just going to line up the right side of the die with the right side of the word. And by doing that, I'm creating kind of a custom banner for this shorter phrase. Then we can run that through the die cut machine and you'll see that we have a really cute banner um, with this really fun new alphabet. And I love that I could do um, a custom sentiment, but I could also maybe like stamp someone's name out or something and personalize a card too, which would be really fun. And then I'm just gonna add some tape runner behind this and layer this between the window and kind of that pattern paper. Um, and then all we need to do is add a card base. So this is a standard size, uh, five and a half by four and a quarter. And I'm just gonna layer that on onto the back of the scallop. And when I layer onto the back of the scallops, I always like to flip the card over and then just kind of center it into the scallops. And now this beautiful card is all done and I think it's so pretty. It is so much fun to add color to the secret garden frame with markers. I think it'd be really fun to do it with watercolor as well. I think it would just look so pretty and I can't wait to try that. And I love that it's really easy to make a shaker out of this window too. And I think it just looks so very, very pretty. Next up, Shari is going to use colored cardstock and a lot of layering of those cute little flowers to create a gorgeous card. So take it away, Shari. On my card today, I'm creating that secret garden window by layering two different pieces together. So I'm going to cut these apart. This part cuts the window and then this is going to cut a window that has foliage around it. So I'm going to be cutting that from the green cardstock. For the window itself with that little dotted frame, I'm going to be cutting that from some Gotta Have Gingham rainbow paper. I'm going to go with that purple today. And then I'm cutting it out with the largest outside in stitch rectangle so that I have that stitching border on the outside edge of my panel. And then I'll line up the window part of the secret garden window die to cut out the center. I've also cut a piece of that cilantro cardstock with that same outside in stitch rectangle so that these line up perfectly. And I just put it together with a little piece of removable tape to hold them together while I line up the window with all the flowers and leaves. So I've run that through my die cut machine and I'm just popping out the center carefully. And you can see I have all these little flowers and leaves that are inset inside of that window that I cut out from the gingham paper. I want to layer these layers together but I want them to be separated a little bit so that I can tuck some flowers in between them. So I'm just adding some foam tape around all four sides of the gingham paper. I'm just going to add a few little dots right in those corners to make sure it's all nice and supported. And I can pull off that liner paper and since I cut the green panel that's going to layer behind it, in the same size with that stitch rectangle, I can just easily line up these two rectangles, stack them together, and then that green panel with the leaves cut out is perfectly centered in my window that I cut from the gingham. Now I've cut lots of little flowers and leaves as you can see in the top left corner there. This is from the other little dies in this set. Some of these will layer on top of the flowers that are cut from the frame. Others you can just tuck in and that's what I'm going to do. A combination of layering and tucking my different colors of flowers and leaves. So I've got that green for my base for everything that's cut from the window. So everything else I cut from some different colors and I layered those little tulip or heart shaped flowers onto the pieces of the frame for these little I'm going to call them daisies because they have a center and I cut them out of white. I layered the solid behind the piece that has the center cut out and then I'm just layering them over the little daisies that are peeking out from the outside of the frame. In addition to the little daisies, I've also cut those branches of leaves. I cut them from some peacock cardstock as well as that dark blue, which is from the textured canvas blue cardstock pack. And I just like this look of tucking them in behind that frame that's cut from the gingham and then layering over the floral frame that's cut from the cilantro. I wanted a little bit more of that pink, so I actually just added that little pink flower to one of those leaves that was sticking out. 
And you can see I'm just kind of working my way around, kind of trying to even out the colors, make sure everything's nice and balanced, and fill in that frame nicely with all these extra floral pieces. I am working in little clusters around. And then I am going back to those little daisy shaped flowers. They cut out the flower as well as the center. So I have some different colored flowers and centers. And I'm just gluing those directly to that cilantro background piece and then dropping a center into each flower. And this is looking pretty full at this point. So I think I probably am going to stop here in just a minute. I'm trying to figure out if there's any other great places to tuck things. And I think I have come to the end with this last little branch at the top. Now I've put some foam tape all over the back of this piece and I'm going to pop it onto a card base that's cut from some mermaid cardstock. Since the rectangles that I used before are those outside in rectangles, I am going to see that cardstock on the outside edge for a nice little border as well as the center of my window. So I have a lot of dimension on this because I have two layers of foam, one behind the whole panel and one between the two windows. I've pulled out some stamps from the Offset Sayings Everyday stamp set that says I'm sending in your way. And then I used the new Scripty Big Words hot foil plate to foil the sentiment that says big hugs. I trimmed off the end so it will fit behind my window. And I'm just adding a little bit of glue just to the edges since it's kind of floating um, because that window is popped up from that background piece. And then I felt like I wanted to bring something in at the top where we have that arch of the window, those two corners, but I didn't want to add any more flowers. I wanted to keep those inside my window. So I just pulled out some teal lawn trimmings twine, tied a little bow, and I'll add a glue dot to add the center of that. And then I can just straighten those out a little bit and trim off those excess ends. And then I have this cute little bow that adds some nice interest and texture to the outside of the frame. And then of course, I wanted to add a little bit of glitter. So I'm adding it to those pink flowers because I think they really stand out more than all the rest of them and so I wanted them to have some glitter as well and then I'm just kind of going around and doing some touches just on leaves here and there and then here is my finished card I just think it turned out really lovely I like that window frame cut from that gingham I think that's really fun and I really like how these look layered together this card is so cute, Shari, and I love how you use the window to highlight a sentiment. I think that's such a cool idea. And next up, we have some beautiful cards by the design team. And this card by Megan is so pretty. I love how she added those hearts and the cute hugging critters. Here, Audrey used the plain window as a place to frame her daffodils. And I think this is just so gorgeous. Here is the card by Grace that inspired me to make mine today. It looks so cute with those elephants as a baby card. And here I love how Elise layered the floral paper behind this window and added a bunch of extra greenery. It's so pretty. And then here Callie also created a really fun shaker and I love all those sequins in the background. I love how Elena used the plain frame to frame these elephants and this card inspired me to make mine today. And then here Mindy decided to use the plain frame to highlight the fly high hot air balloons and I think this is such a sweet card. And then Kara added some beautiful extra flowers and even added some dimension to the flowers as well. And I think that looks so beautiful as an Easter card. So we cannot wait to see what you guys create with Secret Garden Windows. So make sure to share with us. Thank you so much for watching today and I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye.